Hello folks, in this video I'm going to go through how to set up and get working SPI devices and a problem area that I've encountered many times. There's a typical scenario. I've got a ESP board, ESP32 board, I've got a SPI device. Which pins do I use to connect? And getting it working is easy, right? It's the same theme as the uh, I2C bus not easy to always establish which pins are which. So I thought I'd just quickly go through using an ILI 9341 display what the various connections are. So there's a definition of a master which is your ESP32 or 8266 or Arduino. The slave is your peripheral device, your sensor, the display, um, BME 280 uh, ILI 931. A master out slave in is also known as um, slave data in or data in on many devices so it's very very confusing. So that's the data out. The master in, so it's input to the master slave out, is, um, is the device outputted by the um, is the data sorry outputted by the device clock is to synchronize the data transfers usually on a rising or falling edge and you can set what's called the mode as mode one zero uh, through to three there's I think four different modes slave select often called chip select data command for instance if that pin is high it's a data and if it's low it's a command Reset used to reset the device to a known state and in this device it has an LED pin which you can typically feed through 3.3 volts. So what is the problem? Well identifying those pins, which pin is the master out slave in, clock, reset, data command, chip select, etc. There are about six or seven pins sometimes. Sometimes master out slave in is called um, slave data out, or slave data in, there's no standard clock is slave clock, slave select is chip select, it's confusing and finding out which pins on your device on your board are being used is difficult and time consuming, there's no easy way. One solution I've found is to just use the compiler, the usually compiler has already defined the the words or the function master out slave in, master in slave out. So if you just simply print out those definitions as I've done here with that short program it will tell you what the pin number is. Um, in this case 23, 19, 18, 5 and 9. So now I know from doing that that master out slave in is pin 23 uh, and so on through to reset is GPIO 9. Um, luckily there is a standard emerging of 23, 19, 18 and 5 for master out slave in clock and slave select but you can reassign those pins with the SP32 SPI begin statement there I've put an example of it of how you go about. Well that was easy wasn't it? So hmm, reset on my board this Wemos Lolin 32 is actually assigned by the compiler to GPIO 9 but there is no GPIO 9 pin. Now what do I do? Well luckily the libraries um, enable you to assign pins to chip select data command and reset. So here's an Adafruit ILI 931 example where that's being done. So now I know that chip select is on GPIO 5 because I've assigned that. Data command is 17, reset is 16. Mozzie is, is already defined for me. It's on pin 23 I now know and clock is on pin GPIO 18. So now I've got all my data lines defined. I know how to connect. Um, for my other example, I, the BME280, it only requires chip select, so you just need to put the chip select pin you wish to use into that definition. 
this is how you would connect it now I know I I know with VCC I know where 5 volts and ground are and I can go ahead and add in the the rest of the connections if I wanted to move on and add in the the SD card reader I'd have to add in the SD begin chip select on pin 4 GPIO 4 and parallel up all the rest of the SPI connections so in summary then yes it always seems to me daunting to to establish which pin is which and which board am I using um, I roughly can start off with those default definitions but they're not always default and I can reassign the pins on the ESP32 now um, and I could also define the pins for data command chip so they can reset um, I've found none of this easy. I hope you've this video helps you to find it a little bit easier and um, here's some hints and tips for you. Uh, enjoy.